All right, welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Contributor Summit 2021. This is our first experiment with doing this Contributor Summit online. And please note, I consider this experiment and I hope you'll be patient with us as we work through what this experience is like in the past. Well, I'm gonna share my screen and talk about why we're in this format, et cetera. Let's, let's just go ahead. So, this is the Jenkins Contributor Summit. We'll be running for two, two days, um, 23rd through the 25th, basically a 48 hour period where we're going to encourage people to be con act as contributors and help us understand the vision for where we wanna go. Um, today's session will last for about two hours. The intent is we'll have welcome and introduction that I'll provide, then project related updates and team related updates special interest group updates, and then we will take about the last 30 minutes, slip into breakout rooms, and schedule the tracks for this, this summit. There were specific tracks of interest, and those specific tracks of interest, we would invite you to, to enter into those breakout rooms, work with the track leader to assure that you're, you've found a time that work for everyone to meet together, and then hold those meetings sometime within the next two-day period so that for our conclusion on Thursday, we have a, a ready summary of what came from those track meetings. So now, why are we doing a contributor summit? Well, we need to gather Jenkins contributors, the, the Jenkins developers, people who test, people who write, Jenkins administrators, Jenkins users, many more of those who are actively willing to assist with Jenkins in its development. Uh, Jenkins is used in over 250,000 installations worldwide. It's widely used, very popular, and matters deeply to many organizations, both companies and open source organizations. In this session, we'll review the, the last 12 months of work, what things we've achieved, and talk about what leaders believe we should do as the neck in the next 12 months, and then that will be discussed in more detail in the, the various tracks that we'll meeting, be meeting separately. So schedule wise, we're now in the opening session. We'll do 60 to 90 minutes of presentations from the Jenkins board, from Jenkins officers and special interest groups. Then we'll slip into breakout rooms where in the breakout rooms, we have the track leaders seek to choose a time when that track could meet so that everyone can be part of the discussions that are held in that track meeting. We know that this is a 24 hour a day world. Uh, I was just chatting with a colleague in India minutes ago and that is, this is a really bad time for that person in India. So we rely on you as track leaders and as participants in the track to find a meeting time that will work for you. If most of your team members are in China Meet, meet during a time that works for Beijing. If most of your team members are in Europe or in some part of the US, meet at a time that works for them. Uh, it's also okay to do multiple tracks, the document or multiple meetings of a track. The documentation SIG already knows we will do two track meetings. So we're gonna do one meeting for the Europe time zone and one meeting for the Western US. So that those track meetings will happen beginning today or whenever you negotiate through the start of the closing session on Thursday. Anytime in that 48 period, meet together. You're welcome to use Zoom or Jitsi or Hangouts, whatever works well for you. Um, the track leaders, as assigned right now, actually have access to the CDF Zoom account, that they can use that, um, use other systems if you need to. Then in the closing session, we'll look forward to the track leaders presenting a summary of what the results are in the track. And we'll look to see updated proposals submitted to the Jenkins roadmap. So let's do project and team updates now. And I think now it's, Oleg, it's yours. Okay, I can do that. So do you want me to present myself or do you want to... I was assuming it would be simpler for if I advance the slides and uh, but if you would rather I can I can give you control and we can let you okay. share what would you prefer. I will rather share then. Okay, let me I'll stop sharing and we'll have you share your screen then. Yeah. 
uh, usually uh, jump between links. So, right, understood. Yeah. Host disable participants. Yeah, share. just a minute. I'll allow you to share. I I was trying to be careful. So no zoom bombing today. <laughs> right, please. Okay. So do you see my screen? I do. Thank you. Yeah. So just a quick update on uh, Jenkins governance. And um, yeah, last year was actually quite busy. Um, in 2019, we had first uh, ever elections. Uh, we expanded uh, the Jenkins governance board and we started uh, pushing a few topics in the community, most notably um, streamlining some of the community processes and getting uh, more people involved, involved in maintenance roles. Um, and there were um, several uh, important um, changes. So, yeah, this list isn't prioritized. I will just go through that quickly. So one of the first items that we introduced a new Jenkins public roadmap, which aggregates initiatives in various aspects of the projects, like features, documentation, outreach programs, uh, um, et cetera, et cetera. So in theory, we wanted to put um, all major initiatives happening in the Jenkins community um, on this list so that potential users and contributors can discover them. And you can uh, find a lot of uh, uh, topics there. And uh, one of uh, subjects uh, for this uh, um, uh, event and also for the Jenkins governance meeting tomorrow is to actually um, uh, refresh the roadmap and to see what we are missing, especially in terms of near term and future. So items we want to do and we want to see in the project uh, in a possible future. Um, then uh, we have graduated from the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, well, we're still a part of Continuous Delivery Foundation, but uh, Jenkins was the first project to graduate. Uh, as a part of that, uh, we uh, changed our processes, we updated uh, our code of conduct, uh, we have achieved uh, full compliance with um, core infrastructure initiative uh, requirements, etc. And uh, it also helped us uh, to get some visibility and uh, to get uh, um, uh, promotions uh, by the Continuous Delivery Foundation. And yeah, we should keep working on that. Um, other important change was terminology cleanup and new code of conduct. Both of them uh, happened uh, in the beginning of the summer to address uh, a concern uh, raised by community members, and uh, now uh, we are more aligned. Uh, technology cleanup is still ongoing uh, process, and we look for contributors uh, to get it over the line. Uh, but uh, yeah, still, uh, yeah, it's a significant uh, change. Then uh, we've got a new funding uh, page. We've also got a page listing Jenkins adopters. So if you're interested, you can just uh, go to the browser and find uh, these pages. So basically, Jenkins AO slash project, and you can find a lot of uh, uh, things here. Basically, all this documentation has been created or moved and updated uh, during the last year. So um, if you're interested, take a look. And yeah, last but not least, we had uh, 2020 elections. Uh, these elections, um, so we added uh, two new board members, uh, Marty Jackson and Gavin Morgan. Uh, do we have them on the call here? I guess not. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, so currently we have uh, five active uh, board members and uh, we can uh, drive uh, different initiatives uh, in the community if needed. Um, so it helps uh, uh, to achieve uh, the goals and also to facilitate particular topics uh, which uh, we would like uh, uh, to drive in the community. So uh, what's next uh, for uh, the board? Actually, when we were doing uh, 2020 elections, uh, one of the questions was, uh, uh, what do you like uh, to see in terms of uh, Jenkins governance board activities? And we got uh, more than 40 responses. Uh, some of them were paragraph long, some of them were short, uh, but uh, there are three key items uh, in the feedback there. So first, they keep growing the community, keep the community healthy, help uh, new contributors to join, etc. It was uh, one of the biggest areas of feedback. Then uh, there are architecture changes and modernization, also a lot of feedback and they diversify Jenkins beyond CI, CD. Uh, there were surprisingly many answers uh, uh, proposing that. So Jenkins is an automation server, but uh, yeah, historically a lot of applications are only using CI, CD. But it's nice to see that uh, people want to see other areas as well. Uh, 
at the end that uh, they will also a lot of positive feedback uh, and the requests to organize more events, uh, uh, written a Jenkins World Conference. Maybe we should do that uh, as a Jenkins user conference, who knows? Uh, but yeah, these are key items. Uh, what uh, we also have uh, on our roadmap uh, in the to-do list so we have uh, contributor onboarding. We need to onboard uh, individual contributors and company contributors. We need to facilitate Jenkins roadmap. And uh, there are a number of uh, formal items which we need to address at the governance board. So first, the Jenkins enhancement proposal process needs to be reworked. Currently, it doesn't work as it was intended. And um, it's, it becomes an obstacle for those who try to create uh, jobs. And at the same time, it, we cannot appoint people to the process because uh, um, this process doesn't help to deliver changes and to build consensus around them. So we will need to work on that. Then um, uh, finally, Jenkins trademark has been transferred to the Dynex Foundation. It's just updated from the last week. And what it means for us is so that uh, we as a Jenkins project need uh, to perform updates, including the Jenkins website, well, all Jenkins websites, also our CLA, also our documentation. So there will be a lot of activities required around that. There are also other programs like Friend of Jenkins, which are not quite active at the moment. And uh, yeah, so it's just the uh, uh, top of the list. And of course, so there are many other items uh, we need to think about uh, when it comes to governance. Um, on the roadmap, currently we don't have much things, but I believe that uh, we still have um, a technical steering committee here, which is slightly aligned with JEP process revamp. And uh, there was also a lot of discussions about uh, user advisory board um, over past uh, months. So maybe we should also put it on the list so that uh, we can also start uh, working with users, maybe as a part of continuous delivery foundation efforts with a user council or independently. But uh, this is items uh, uh, which are currently on the radars. And if you have any other proposals, if you would like to see any additional changes, um, we have a governance meeting tomorrow. And I suggest to use it uh, to discuss uh, what's next in governance and uh, what are the requirements. Okay. Any questions, comments? Okay. So if you think that uh, I talk too much, then yeah, Jenkins core. So I guess is it one? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Jenkins core was uh, quite active in the past year. So historically, Jenkins core was rather a set of extensibility um, features uh, like extension points, some uh, basic frameworks, etc. And historically, there were not so many features being delivered in the Jenkins core directly. Um, this year, it slightly changed because there were projects uh, specifically targeting uh, features uh, provided by Jenkins core and underlying frameworks. Uh, the key highlight uh, is UI UX revamp. There were many ch changes in different uh, uh, focuses. Uh, later, we will have a UX seek update. Uh, but yeah, basically there were local and field improvements, so there were new controls, uh, there was uh, better support for themes introduced and a dark theme for Jenkins. And uh, there uh, was major uh, revamp of plugin manager, I guess two revamps by now. Um, also uh, cloud configuration management, etc. And uh, there is upcoming change related to tables to leaves configuration and uh, many other smaller accessibility and UI UX topics. So if you use Jenkins, you may have noticed that the web interface changed a lot over the past year. Then uh, the, for users of uh, configuration as code, uh, there is now support of read-only configuration UI so that uh, you can uh, configure everything as code but still access uh, information. There is managed permission, which provides um, a reduced uh, permission set. Uh, so you can uh, have managers in addition to full admins. Um, in Google Summer of Code, we introduced external fingerprint storage and uh, there is also new Windows installer. Uh, again, it's not uh, all new features, it's just uh, one uh, top ones from the change logs. And uh, yeah. uh, there were also some changes uh, which are not that public facing, but which are really important for the project. 
The first, of course, is security. There will be a lot of security hardening and fixes uh, around the Jenkins core. Uh, there will be many advisories this year. Again, it will be discussed later in Depends. Um, and another important highlight is that uh, this year there was major updates in terms of technical depth and dependencies. Uh, there were many topics like SG security, extreme, which we were afraid to touch for years. But this year we finally did it. So extreme, jQuery, screen security, also we enabled Dependabot and there were dozens of library updates uh, within the project. Uh, it helps with security scans. It also uh, helps uh, with um, functionality and um, allows to keep the project up to date. So thanks to everyone who contributed and uh, yeah, it's great that we address this topic. Also we removed a bunch of dependencies, which is also a good thing. Um, another important effort is code quality and smells. So there is a number of contributors uh, who work on uh, various um, uh, static analysis, issue cleanups, IDE warnings, performance optimizations. And although these efforts uh, do not always get to change logs, uh, some efforts are too minor, some efforts are the refactoring, but actually they, they also help to uh, keep uh, the code base, uh, code base up to date. And uh, thanks to all contributors. Uh, I put uh, some names on the list, but uh, firstly, this list is not complete. And uh, uh, if I missed something, sorry, uh, someone. Um, and yeah, for, for, yeah, hopefully we will finally have a list of contributors directly in the change logs like we planned at some point. Uh, but yeah. Okay, uh, there will be some changes in the maintenance. So firstly, we finally got release automation for LTS and weekly releases. So there is no new release automation infrastructure which uh, builds, tests, and sends uh, and ships releases. It's a major enhancement compared to the state in 2019. Then uh, we've got a new release officer, uh, Tim Jacom. Uh, we also onboarded uh, a number of new maintain core maintainers so that uh, there are more people who have permissions who can review and merge changes. And thanks uh, hello to everyone who does it on the regular basis. Uh, we currently maintain uh, around six uh, pull requests uh, in the open state. It's an improvement compared to previous years and uh, we merge um, a few dozen pull requests uh, every week. So, yeah. It's a good balance for now. And uh, now this depend about uh, many of these pull requests actually uh, artificial ones. So oh, it uh, improves the situation. Then of course, core infrastructure initiative compliance. So now our maintenance policies and documentation and security policies, all of them are like aligned with the Linux foundation requirements. And uh, they are also documented so that uh, users uh, can uh, discover these policies and potentially tell, uh, unbox uh, additional uh, opportunities like uh, security analysis funding. And yeah, Dependabot, uh, we talked about it briefly, but finally Dependabot is also part of the Jenkins core. So uh, now, they, uh, uh, now we can uh, update dependencies uh, in a much more relaxed state than it used to, do, to be before when every update was manual. Okay, what's next? Uh, basically, there will be new uh, LTS soon. And uh, there was a blog post by Mark about uh, changes upcoming in this release. And one specific change, which we uh, need to highlight once and once again, is uh, configuration UI ta tables to divs. So if uh, you use complex configurations, uh, please uh, take a look at the current weekly releases or at the release candidate and uh, try them out to see whether uh, your plugins are compatible. And if not, please report issues because uh, this is a compatibility breaking change. Uh, we know a lot many plugins affected and we're interested to stabilize it as much as possible before the general availability of the LCS baseline. And securing uh, the Jenkins delivery pipeline, it will be a separate uh, uh, track which where we will be discussing any kind of security issues with our build infrastructure and uh, plugin delivery infrastructure. And I guess that's it about what's next because uh, there is no other specific initiatives uh, planned for the Jenkins core at the moment. And uh, if you see any major initiative missing, uh, let's discuss it uh, during the summit.
Thanks, Oleg. Thanks very much. So, Oleg, maybe you'd be willing to continue driving for this piece. Daniel, I was going to drive for, for Daniel, but since you're already on the on shared screen, why don't you just go ahead and bring this up and we'll let Daniel take the next voice. Daniel, thank you very much. Daniel, our Jenkins security officer. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks, Oleg, for driving. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so 2020 has been quite a busy year, as uh, many past years have been for uh, Jenkins uh, and Jenkins security and the Jenkins security team. So to get the stats out of the way first, we delivered uh, 19 Jenkins security advisories, um, five um, Jenkins core security updates, fixing 19 vulnerabilities. And in terms of plugins, um, we announced 200 vulnerabilities in about uh, 150 plugins, of which two thirds uh, had fixes, which means about one third of the vulnerabilities that we announced were in plugins uh, that are unmaintained or whose maintainers were otherwise not, uh, we were unable to contact. Um, and in that case, as you surely know, we uh, published the advisory and set up the warning to inform the administrators about that. Last year, we've Late last year, we've uh, started a trial run of using CodeQL, um, a recently uh, by GitHub acquired technology for security scans. The problem that we've always had in the past um, with uh, security scans is that a lot of the things that we do in Jenkins are fairly unusual, for example, using the Stable Web Framework. So other security scanners always often didn't have really uh, useful results. And with the custom rules that we wrote for this, um, for Jenkins specific problems, uh, we've been able to identify several vulnerabilities uh, in plugins uh, that we uh, fixed. And of course, the idea is to expand that even further. <clears throat> So like already mentioned, we updated some dependencies in core, most notably uh, Xtreme and um, replacing a SEGI security with Spring security. Those are not immediately useful for, for, for security, but this limits risk if we're tracking the upstream project and their releases more closely, we will not have uh, substantial problems when um, a vulnerability is discovered if we are on a really outdated release. Um, so that indirectly also benefits security. Of course, uh, two steps forward, one step back. Uh, last Friday, we delivered a security update for recent uh, Jenkins uh, weekly releases because this update of Spring Security introduced a security vulnerability. Um, Oleg, you're still sharing your screen? Yeah, I was just showing the security advisory. Yeah, so this only affects uh, the Jenkins weekly releases because uh, previously published LTS releases do not yet have spring security, but will in a few weeks. Um, on the UI UX side uh, for security, we made the security warnings more visible in the plugin manager inside Jenkins, which allows administrators to more easily understand which updates uh, relate to which security issues they want uh, to fix. And finally, the most exciting entry in this list, unfortunately you will not be able to tell, is the internal tool improvements. So the Jenkins security team is a very small team and we publish quite a lot of security advisories um, help maintainers deliver security updates. And uh, we've massively improved our internal automation over the last year uh, for advisory authoring, for delivering um, updates, um, for um, merging security fixes into Jenkins. Uh, obviously, very little of that is visible uh, uh, to the outside, but um, you may already have seen the new Jenkins security um, logo or avatar that is also on this slide on the right uh, in the commit history of the early January core security update. That is the avatar of our um, release uh, for our security uh, bot. Uh, please, next slide. 
So what's next? Obviously, we're going to continue delivering security fixes, security advisories to inform administrators that they need to keep their software updated. Um, but beyond that, um, we want to improve the developer tooling to make it easier for maintainers to keep their plugins secure and to do the right thing in the first place. Um, in particular, making the Jenkins security scan based on CodeQL available publicly um, and to roll it out to all Jenkins plugins uh, hosted in the Jenkins project. Um, then securing the Jenkins delivery pipeline. This is kind of a theme of this Contributor Summit. Uh, we're all about automation, but maintainers release uh, plugins from their laptops. That's not quite uh, where we want to be. So um, there has been a lot of automation work in the past uh, by Olivier Vernon and others uh, to automate the core releases. And Jesse Glick has done some work, uh, gotten started with it to automate the releases of Jenkins plugins. And ideally, we will be able to take that developer laptop out of the equation entirely. And um, finally, uh, we want to get more people involved, uh, more contributors involved in Jenkins security. Now, um, it's I cannot just make everyone who asks nicely of a full member of the security team with access to information about unresolved security vulnerabilities in a variety of components. Um, but as I hopefully demonstrated, not everything is just fixing security issues. There are a lot of ways for people to contribute to Jenkins security, to the ecosystem, uh, to the documentation, to the UI UX uh, of security. Um, even if they don't have access to the poison cabinet. And so if this is something that interests you, just let me know um, and we'll figure this out. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Next up is Olivier Vernin. It sounds like it's my round. Next, please. So basically, I want to I want to start with that. Um, basically, last year has been tough in terms of um, service stability, uh, uh, service outages, but we also drastically improved the reliability on other services. So <clears throat> the reason why I want to mention this year is we had a um, few issues with the service that we rely on, which help us to identify. Um, gaps, gaps we had in our processes. So we drastically improve uh, the monitoring, we drast drastically improve our process around managing infrastructure. Um, and yeah, that, that basically come with um, increasing the Jenkins Infra project basically. Can you go to the next slide, please? So I, I can't really, I mean, I don't really have one way to, 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 to highlight how um, the, the infrastructure is used because um, we, we run many different websites, but this one is just Google Analytics. Get a Google Analytics that shows you the traffic we had on the main website, Jenkins.io. Um, and as you can see here, we have users from everywhere in the world, um, and the traffic increased by 30%. So if you know, if you understand what's happening on the main website, just imagine what happened on Tira, the plugin site, the update center, and many, many other web services. So that's what I mean by we had few scalability issues to keep up with the demands. Um, but overall, I think in terms of reliability, the last year has been really great. Um, can you move to the next slide, please? Um, so basically the main areas that we work on over the last year, so we already mentioned the release environments. Um, so we now have a secure way um, to, to trigger a release. So the community can see when we do a release, what's the output. So obviously it increased the feedback loops um, if something goes wrong. Um, so it has been used since April. We also worked a lot on the Mirror infrastructure. So the Mirror infrastructure are the services that people use each time they want to update a plugin, they want to install, update Jenkins core or whatever. So we had a lot of scalability issues in the past um, and it's now getting way better. Um, 
we, we work as well on documentation. We migrate Jira to, um, to the Linux Foundation. So that was also a major um, initiatives. So the idea is we don't have to maintain that service anymore. So we don't care about version update and so on. So that's, that was something really great that happened over the past year, um, which helped us focusing on other services. And something major that happened as well was cost cutting, um, because we have to, to keep we have to keep control on the way we spend. We're spending our money in the Jenkins infra, but I mentioned that in one in the coming slides. So next, please. Next slide. Yep. Thanks. Um, so just something that I want to highlight is the number of contributions done to the Jenkins infra project. So people. Um, I mean, we had quite a lot of contributors. Um, some are just documentation, some are specifically like Puppet, Kubernetes, or whatever. But basically, we had a lot of traction um, in the project. We, we had a really stable um, amount of um, weekly meetings with, on average, three to five people attending each time. So, I mean, that was a really great idea, great um, year in terms of contribution specifically to the Jenkins and Frap project. Um, something also that I like to see in this graph is how um, the contributor shifted from um, contributing from the United States to Europe. Um, I mean, from, from my point of view, it's definitely easier to connect with the people, but yeah. Um, please, next slide. Please, next. Um, <clears throat> something that I mean I don't often share is how much the Jenkins Infra project costs and basically what happened over the past year. Um, something really specific to us is we don't have a credit card, um, so we don't really have a budget. So when we want to bring more services to the community, we have to find sponsoring, um, which is great when we have sponsors, but ob obviously sponsors uh, come and goes. And sometimes we also have to, to make choices about um, what are the services that we can keep. Um, not every sponsors provide us. Uh, so we have different kind of sponsors. Those who just provide us services for free um, and we don't know how much we are spending. So an example of that is repo.jenkinsia.org sponsored by GFrog. Um, it's a quite critical, critical component of our infra infrastructure, but I mean, we have no insight of how much we would have to pay for that machine. But on the other side, we have sponsors that just give us credits which allow us to spend the credit the way we want to spend it. Um, and so that, that's where this number come from. Um, I just look at every cloud, uh, every account that we have, how we are spending the money, and basically it helps us to identify um, if it's worthwhile to use more of a specific service um, to identify other different kind of sponsor and so on. So if you look at the left uh, diagrams, those are a percentage of the $200,000 spent over the last year. But obviously, this is the minimum number because, as I said, Datadog, IBM, GFrog, PagerDuty offer us services that we don't have to pay. And so we don't have an insight on how much we would have to pay for those. Um, and so what happened when we don't have a sponsor anymore? Um, then the CDF um, paid the bill. Um, it's, it's like um, the last uh, solution, uh, so it's really nice, but on long term, we have to increase that, um, that numbers. And so over the last year, we went from spending 20, 20K per month on the Azure account to less than 10K, 10,000. Um, so right now, in terms of our objective, it's fine, but it also says that we cannot easily increase the usage, so we have to find other options um, to increase, um, I mean, to increase the, the number of machines um, in the future. Um, so yeah, right now we have 40% of the, that money, which is sponsored, and then we have to find solution for the rest. Next, next slide, please. So. The way, the way I want to finish this is it's quite difficult to, to define a roadmap for the Jenkins Infra because we are even, I mean, we even depend on um, provider that we have, sponsors that we have, and um, the ecosystem, the way it evolves. Um, but the, the main the main idea here is to keep working on sponsoring. Um, we are definitely looking for sponsors who can sponsor us for 
years. Um, the reason for that is because it take time to migrate between cloud vendors. Um, and that energy could be spent somewhere else than just migrating between cloud vendors. So if you have any ideas of suggestions, that would be really nice. Um, another major area that I think we, we have to work is the plugin release environment. Um, if we have to put something in place, so we already mentioned that we have an environment for releasing Jenkins core. Um, we may have to put in place something for the plugin ecosystem as well, uh, which has different needs. Um, so this is something that I would like to work in the coming year. Um, I want to mention Confluent. So over the past year, we spent quite a lot of time migrating the documentation from Confluent to either the Jenkins.io website or on the plugin site. Um, that confluence machine is still something that we have to maintain, um, and ideally I would like to see it moving, um, to see it go as far as we can. So I think it would be nice to, to focus on what's missing to, to stop that service, definitely. Um, <clears throat> we have some work to do on the update center, um, not the service itself, um, but uh, where it's running. So we, we have some cleanup to do in the Amazon accounts. And so that service is running on, on that on, on the Amazon account. So we, we have, I mean, we, it's a critical component to our infrastructure. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, cannot, we cannot easily modify the way it's deployed and managed. So um, that's something that we have to clearly uh, look at. And finally, yeah, we have few maintenance tasks that happen every year. Um, this time, I think we'll have to focus on the Puppet and Terraform codes um, to just do some updates. We wrote those codes uh, years ago, and so now um, it will be soon some time to, to, to update that. So yeah, that, that's all for me. Any questions? I mean, the roadmap is not something fixed, so if you want to, to work on something particularly, um, yeah, feel free to, to, to make suggestions. <laughs> We, we have a roadmap, but I mean, it, it, it changed uh, depending on the needs. Thanks, Olivier. Oleg, let's go to the next slide then. Thank you very much. So Tim Jacome, our Jenkins release officer. Next topic, Tim, go ahead. Hey everyone, um, next slide. Cool. Um, so yeah, last year was the year that we finally got core release automation working, which is um, basically completely automated um, building um, building testing and deploying and um, releasing the Jenkins wars to the to the world um, and so we I think it was in June July ish um, weekly release was completed and we started doing weekly releases um, and so that's all completely hands off triggered automatically every Tuesday. Um, at around 10.30 a.m. UTC, I think, roughly then. Um, and yeah, so that's completely hands off. Um, and then we have LTS and security releases as well. Um, so that's a huge, um, it's a huge milestone for the Jenkins project. Previously, um, Kosaki had to release every single version of Jenkins back from the very first one up until whichever version it was that we stopped at. Um, and I think he had it semi-automated, but it sometimes failed. And if he wasn't around, it could take a while. And um, a hu huge benefit is we can now, if there's something seriously wrong in an existing version, we can quickly release a new one. Um, and there's a number of contributors that are able to trigger a release. Um, so yeah, I've taken over the release officer um, mostly just trying to make sure it's not centralized, um, grow the team a bit and, and get other people involved. And um, so started that off with some documentation of the full end-to-end -end LTS release process um, and developed a checklist and we're trying to, um, and some Mark's helped out on the last couple of releases and I think it's been quite good. Um, so Mark was coordinating some of the 2.26, three LTS releases. Next slide. Cool, so what's next in releases? Um, so you heard quite a few lines there. The only line that we don't have automated and is still running on my machine is the LTS release candidate builds, which I really would like to get off my machine. Um, 
So we, some progress was made last year, but we weren't it didn't get it fully working. Um, so we just, yeah, we need to finish off that part. Um, so Jesse's plug and release automation has already been talked about, um, but it's quite good. And um, the few plugins using it already and there's documentation on Jenkins.io um, for how you can change your plugin over to using it. Um, not sure what that line was. Mark chucked it in there. Um, more dependency management automation. I mean, there's the Jenkins bot, the Jenkins plugin bomb is going well um, and it's getting widely used. And it's in the archetypes for every new plugin that gets created. Um, and so I talked about the build, test, deployment of the Jenkins release earlier. There's more than that that goes on. Um, there's things, there's things like change log and some testing that's done outside of the Jenkins core process. Um, and so there's a number of manual steps that are done, especially for LTS releases. Um, the weekly release manual checklist is a lot shorter, but the LTS one has quite a lot in it. Um, and there's a number of things that we can be done to automate that. Even yesterday, Gareth just did a pull request, which should help, which is automatically updating the LTS version in the Helm chart. Um, and so it's the public community Helm chart. Um, but yeah, there's a number of areas where that would be useful to just automatically update. Um, and so I put a few ideas out there for anyone who wants to get involved and help out. Um, but basically pretty much every step on the LTS checklist is up for automation. Um, ideally it's very hands-off and just happens as much as possible. Um, that's it for me. Thanks. So the, the special interest groups are the next topic. Um, Oleg, if you want to go to the next slide. Ah, yes. Felix, could you take us on the user experience? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, can you go to the next one, please? Um, so 2020, uh, I'm happy to say that it has been a rather big year regarding UI changes. Uh, I started with the latest one, which is tables to different configuration UIs. So almost a year ago, uh, Josh Sarev approached the UX seed asking for help driving these his already year old VR um, team has been working, especially team has been working really, really hard on it. So thank you, Tim. And it's it's coming. Uh, after much work on community on plugins after much a bit of pain uh it's coming it's happening uh it's being released in weeks or maybe so i think it's really big i think it's a nice step for accessibility and a good improvement overall we expect some problems though and we are monitoring the bug reports of course there will be bug reports um it's saving improvements. Um, a year ago, the UXC started with the with some um, list of items we wanted to improve, which were heading, heading and footer, typography, uh, hyperlinks, buttons, tables, tabs. So we achieved all of the of those issues, all of those items, except the, the iconography, which thankfully team I will talk about it after all. Uh, the thing is, right, I, I think, in my opinion, definitely has a more modern look at the field. And these styling changes also brought, again, my team, almost oh, many of these are my team, uh, a possibility to improve theming. Um, team created a dark theme, and I think they, they, Daniel created a solarized theme, which I'm a very big fan of. So yeah, that, there's that. There's a, there's a thing, uh, thing manager. Themes are incubated and they will and may break with updates. So there's that, but you can try them out in the plugin manager. A plugin manager, which has been much improved as well by mostly by Daniel and team. And yeah, uh, now there, there's categorization uh, with some nice levels for, for, for each plugin. There's a more much more performance search um, and and then go um, and exception available that pretty good stuff. There's also read-only configuration AIs for users without permission. It's it's really handy. 
And jQuery was upgraded across the whole plugin ecosystem. There were some several several CVEs uh, raised regarding the versions of jQuery used in the, in the Jenkins ecosystem. So we did a sweep across the Jenkins ecosystem and we updated many unsecure jQuery instances or, or we did remove them when possible. By the way, regarding a safe version of jQuery is Uli Hafner's plugin jQuery 3 API that's updated to a secure version. Um, next one, please. Uh, what's coming next? Icon improvements. Uh, I think Jacqueline just created a PR. I will try to add it to the slides after this. If you remember, please not, uh, tell, uh, re remind me of this. He uh, to change the iconography. It's uh, it's going to be a, a big topic on this new LDS cycle, on the June LDS cycle. We are starting small with mostly with um, weather icons and the build status indicators. Uh, we encourage everybody to try them out. Um, progressively, we can expect that I, everybody is welcome to contribute to the new icon updates. There are lots of icons that need to be changed, and it's a huge effort. Um, it's a huge, and we need more developers and designers to be involved. Uh, this EU in this UI is an area where we certainly need community contributions. So, and we welcome everybody. We will help every every need every new, new contributor out. Everybody's welcome to uh, We appreciate any contributions here. So, next one, please. Uh, yeah, so next one, please. Uh, Blue Ocean, we have talked about Blue Ocean before. The status is, and there is no new development on Blue Ocean um, by Cloudbase. Uh, we still monitor it for security, for security issues and defects. Those will be addressed. And uh, any, any important community contribution will be reviewed in March, of course. So yeah, uh, and I think this is it, right? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks, thanks, Felix. So platform SIG, next topic. Uh, Oleg, next slide, please. So in 2020, we, we cemented the support for Java 11. Uh, we've upgraded our Docker images to use Debian 10, CentOS 8, Alpine 312, to use latest versions of the JDK, both for 8 and 11. And we now get proposed image upgrades from Dependabot. We like that very much. We've added additional experimental Docker images, uh, including the, the OpenJ9 support for System 390 mainframes. Um, interesting and fun things continue in the platform. Next next slide, Oleg. Oh dear, did I get the, the what's next slide? I apologize. Apparently the what next slide is the same thing. That's just wrong. Sorry, everybody. We've got more work to do on Docker image maintenance. We've got lots of work to do around how we handle and improve the experience for users of our Docker images. And we've got lots of interest in the in the world in general about ARM. Yeah, next next topic is great, Oleg. I must have made a mistake on the slide. I apologize. I That's we'll we'll be grateful that the platform topic is brief. Documentation SIG likewise should be brief. Next slide there. Uh, delighted with the work from Gavin Mogan and from Oleg on helping us get plugin documentation migrated. We are now at over 50% of plugins have migrated their documentation to GitHub. Congratulations. Thank you, plugin authors. Thank you, documentation authors. Uh, Zenob uh, was our Jenkins on Kubernetes author for Google Season of Docs and did a great job there, mentored by Kristen Whetstone, by me and by others. Great experience. Thank you very much to Google for funding that. The Wiki Migration Project is progressing slowly and we are having successful documentation office hours twice a week with regular attendees, both from the European side and Zenab in Africa and from the US West Coast. Thanks very much. Next slide. What's next in documentation? The crucial things are we need site search for Jenkins.io. And we've got an active project right now that Gavin Mogan is running to improve the plugin site search. In addition, we'd like to join Google Season of Docs 2021 like we did in 2020. 
it's a different program this year. We'll need to look at it a little more carefully, understand how to approach it, but we think we can, we can join it and have benefit from it. We've also got a new initiative from Zenob proposing that the Jenkins Project proposed project ideas to SheCode Africa. SheCode Africa is a, an initiative, Zenob's a member of this group, that attempts to assist women in Africa in becoming more involved in technology. And we look forward to this. We're going to plan for it. It's an upcoming event in April. And yes, we need to improve our contributor onboarding experience, both for SheCode Africa and for other contributors as they arrive. A uh, next slide, Oleg, I think that's it for documentation. Oh, no, no, we've got other concepts, sorry. We want to inventory the current documentation on Jenkins.io, the wiki, and other locations, and then propose destinations. One of the weaknesses we have is we've got an awful lot of content on the wiki that is outdated or partially outdated, needs a, needs a place to be put on Jenkins.io. And that place needs to be carefully considered and thought about as we structure it. We also would love to continue our efforts on changelog automation. Right now, the changelogs for core releases are generated with tooling, but hand curated. And we'd like to consider how can we improve and further refine that. And that's it for documentation. Oleg, next slide. Alyssa, would you like to take on advocacy and outreach? Yes, hi everybody. Um, so next slide, Oleg, please. So in 2020, the Advocacy and Outreach SIG rolled out a few fun outreach programs with the goal to promote and bring Jenkins um, in good light. So one program that we did was called Jenkins is the way. So this basically is an initiative to collect, document, and share how users uses Jenkins. We've uh, documented their challenges, their goals, and their results. And then we published this on a website dedicated to all these stories and which is Jenkins is the way .io that you see there. Um, the industries that we were able to capture these stories includes, just to mention a few, healthcare, financial services, gaming, travel, science. And of course, we received over hundreds of submissions. And of those, uh, just last year alone, we published 70 user stories. And user stories are an abbreviated version of a case study. We also published six case studies, um, five testimonial videos, which can be found on the homepage there, Oleg. Um, yeah, thank you. And then we published one ebook and sent out over 200 um, Jenkins is the way t-shirts. Um, again, the link is Jenkins JenkinsIsTheWay.io. All right, next slide, Oleg. Another, um, another fun item that we pushed out last year was a cartoon video that explains why Jenkins is powerful and flexible tool for CICD. And we, um, once we pushed this out and it attracted over 14,000 views within about three months. Next slide. Uh, we also teamed up with Comet Strip to create Jenkins Comic, just to give some humor uh, to a day in the life of a developer, automation, and Mr. Jenkins. And we also try to relate it to, you know, the stuff that's taking place at the moment, the programs that we were rolling out. So like uh, the Jenkins graduation uh, with CDF, and then Jenkins is the way theme on the uh, right hand side there. Next slide, please. So the events that uh, we were, we had a presence um, at in 2020 includes FOSTEM, SCALE, DevOps World, CDCon, and we participated in the Hacktoberfest. 
um, CDCon, no, sorry, DevOps World was the largest event that we attended last year with over 20,000 registrants. Next slide, please. So what is next for this year? Um, we've completed the online FOSDEM event earlier this month. We will um, have a presence at CDCon, which is taking place in June. So in case anyone is interested in speaking at the conference, the CFP is open until March 5th. This will be a virtual event. And then DevOps World will also be a virtual event, which is taking place in September. Uh, this is the largest Jenkins event of the year. There will be lots of Jenkins content and expertise. So please keep an eye out for the CFP if you're, if you're interested in speaking and that will be available sometime beginning of March. Um, as for Jenkins is the way outreach, we will continue with this program in 2021. Uh, we want to continue to collect more stories. Specifically, we want stories from the open source foundations that are using Jenkins. So if you know of anyone who are um, in this space, please reach out to me and um, we like to write, write up stories about them, how they're using Jenkins within their foundations. Um, and lastly, we, we would love to do an education outreach. Basically, this is a program that will allow for college students to learn and adopt Jenkins as part of their college curriculum. Um, if anyone is interested in building this program, please reach out to me via the Advocacy and Outreach SIG. That's it for me. Thank you. And the next is Google Summer of Code. Great, Google Summer of Code. Next slide, please. This is our fifth year for the Jenkins project to participate in Google Summer of Code. Um, we're very excited about it. Last year was an amazing year. We had seven projects all completed successfully. Really great work was done. So that was uh, very fun. And there were over 40 participants. So it was a very large GSOC participation. We have weekly office hours for GSOC. Please do join. Um, I've put a link to the events calendar um, and then you, you will find the time. It's at, they're on Wednesdays at uh, 1400 UTC. So tomorrow, <laughs> everyone is welcome. Jump on, find out more about GSOC, how you can get involved either as a student, a mentor. Um, we, have, we have our projects listed, but uh, even though our GSOC application is submitted, we are still open for project proposals. So if you have um, an idea, you can uh, feel free to, to bring it up at GSOC office hours and, and or PR our repo uh, for where the project listings are. Thank you for, so these are the projects we have now. All of the draft project ideas um, are, will be moved to accepted. Um, that's, that, that will be done very, very, very shortly. Um, we would like more mentors. We've had a lot of mentors step forward. So thank you so much to all of our mentors and all of those who have suggested project ideas. Having more mentors is always welcome. This year, GSOC is gonna be slightly less coding hours than usual. Usually it's 350 coding hours. This year will be 175 coding hours. So. What that means is that there may very well be slightly less, like say code reviews required from mentors, but we do want students to have a really good experience. So we do want to support them fully, um, which means that we still need loads and loads of mentors and we don't want to over overwhelm you as a mentor. So the more mentors we have, the more the work is spread out, the more support students get. So this is what we're looking for. Um, we can go into the next page and this is just a shout out to all the our GSOC 2020 projects, which we're super proud of. Please go read more about them. They're, they're awesome. So thank you to everyone who was involved in this initiative last year because it was a huge success. Next page. <laughs> and these were our awesome students who um, contributed to Jenkins last year as part of GSOC. So thank you very much to our students. It's quite, quite an honor for us to have uh, all these students participate and um, become involved in the community and 
you know, we, we, um, GSOC is its own project and in and of itself, it's a great body of work and we're really happy to be involved in it, but it is always, um, very validating and we're always very excited when when students continue to be involved in the Jenkins project. So just quick shout out for Sladen, who was um, a GSOC student last year, did a fantastic job, and this year has come back and volunteering to mentor on three of our listed GSOC project ideas. So ne next page. <laughs> so these are our project ideas. Just quick, um, which link through to their listings on our website. Just quick, quick note on Sladen volunteering three times for three three projects uh, to mentor on for this summer. If you do so, that doesn't necessarily mean we expect you to mentor on all three projects. If students pick them up and they go forward as GSAC projects, you know we will work out your your schedule. But um, the mentors should put their names down for any of the project ideas that interest them. So you, you, it's not a commitment, it's a statement of interest and engagement. Um, these are the ones that we have so far, seven of them. We have a potential eighth one in the pipeline, which is very cool. Uh, I was pinged last week saying, oh, you know, you've submitted the GSOC um, application, but I have an idea that's come to me. Can I still submit it to the website? The answer to that question is yes. Uh, these project ideas are fantastic for applying to Google Summer of Code. So they actually form the basis of our organizational application to Google Summer of Code. So they are essential to us. Thank you to everyone who has submitted them. Um, but, but we can still accept more project ideas now. Um, okay, next page. Okay, great. So we've applied to uh, Google Summer of Code this year. It's a little bit different as part of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Um, and we're really part of, we're really excited to be part of the CDF's GSOC org because it's already enabling us to benefit from uh, being part of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. For example, I've already been having conversations um, with the folks at the Continuous Delivery Foundation who are organizing CDCon, which is their conference. And we will likely have our Google Summer of Code students be able to give um, little updates at that conference, which is pretty cool to speak at a conference when you're still a student and participating in Google Summer of Code. So that's really nice. The other really nice thing is uh, it's become that much more natural for us to, um, I guess, work and mentor between projects. So we have one of our project ideas is the Tecton client, is increased work being done on the Tecton client plugin for Jenkins. And it's very likely, fingers crossed, that we will have some Tecton folks also mentoring on that, which I think is a really cool collaboration between projects and will benefit the students. In other ways, um, this is nice, is that uh, being so much part of the Continuous Delivery Foundation, we can get more resources to students or have, have grab sort of like other unofficial mentors and get them a little more um, access to resources. For example, one of our um, projects is on cloud events, um, a cloud events plugin for Jenkins. And there is a cloud events SIG at the CDF. So we're very much encouraging interested students as well as those mentors to engage with that SIG. And you will learn a lot more that way and be able to ask lots of questions. So that's, that's quite nice. Okay, so I briefly mentioned before, GSOC has a shorter coding phase this year, 175 hours versus the the usual the more usual uh, former way of 350 hours. And there will only be two uh, review periods instead of the usual three. But uh, we're still very excited for students to have a great summer and contribute to Jenkins and get involved with open source and join our community. So this should be very, very, very good, good summer. Um, again, additional mention, uh, mentors, please sign up. <laughs> more the merrier, same with project ideas. And uh, last, there are a few links there for joining our GSOC office hours every single week. You can drop in and out of them and ask your questions and find out more about the projects. Uh, there's links to our GSOC meeting notes and um, blog posts on call for mentors, how to, how to sign your name up. Also, there's information on that post on how to propose project ideas. So. Yeah, we will, we hope to uh, hear more from you. Is the short of that. So, thanks, Cara. Next, 
Yeah, there was a question in the chat about um, are these projects only for young students or how young are the students being targeted? So that that too, actually, this is really interesting with GSOC for this year. Um, GSOC is, I guess, traditionally is how you would say it. It's been for for students who are involved in computer science programs. So that it, it's for actual students. Um, and and I think the age cutoff may have been 25, but uh, in general, it was, it was for students. I might have to read those, those links in the blog post on the exact uh, criteria. This year, that criteria though has really opened up in a nice way. So you just have to have been a student on sort of an an official coding program. So it opens up GSOC to students who were uh, engaged in boot camps recently, just graduated from boot camps. So that's quite uh, nice, actually. I, I like that broadening of the potential base. Yeah, one thing which was mentioned that it's not only for coding uh, specialties, it's for any official uh, student, uh, including PhD students. So. It uh, was always like that, but you know, they had uh, an official programs because uh, this year not everybody was able to access education because of COVID disruption. Yes, and that is one of the reasons they're also having the shortened time frame. It's just an acknowledgement that um, yeah, our lives have been disrupted this year. Thanks very much, Cara. Thank you, thank you. So. Um, Rick, who would normally present this material, is probably asleep right now. So just be aware that the Chinese localization SIG is very active. Uh, they continue to translate the, the product. They continue to translate um, change logs. They continue to make progress there. And Rick has been coordinating wonderfully. Um, there is a Chinese localization SIG track identified, likely meeting during working hours for the Chinese teams. Next slide, Oleg. Cara. Cloud Native SIG. Okay, great. Uh, we have a weekly Cloud Native SIG. There is um, a link in this slide for, for all those who would like to join. It's on Fridays at 1400 UTC. Um, during the Cloud Native SIG, we discuss sort of initiatives and projects that are in that space of making Jenkins more uh, cloud native work better on different cloud platforms um, and different things. The three projects we are discussing the most right now are all are all actually they've they've uh, become proposed GSOC project ideas, which I'm very excited about. So we have the Kubernetes operator for Jenkins, which um, there's actually more than one um, Kubernetes operator for Jenkins within the wider Jenkins community. But um, this is the one that's been contributed by Virtuous Labs and they are volunteering to mentor for GSOC as well. What they would like, what the proposal for GSOC and what we're discussing actually in the Cloud Native SIG is um, having greater security feature for, for this uh, plugin. And the idea is that actually um, there are warnings that are given for different plugins if there's a security concern and what this will, what the GSOC project enables is that the students would um, write a check essentially so that the users um, could decide which plugins they would like to install, whether or not they're warnings when using the Kubernetes operator for Jenkins. But but in general, we in the Cloud Native SIG, we, we discuss all sorts of things, Kubernetes and Cloud Native vis-a-vis -vis Jenkins. The other two projects which are getting a lot of um, I guess airtime during the Cloud Native SIG right now, are uh, the text and client plugin, which again is um, an aspect of that has formed a GSOC proposal and the Cloud Events plugin. The Cloud Events plugin is super exciting because right now um, Jenkins doesn't really have a way, it's not, it's, it's not discoverable for Cloud Events. And that's kind of a shame because Cloud Events are being used for interoperability between tools between CI CD tools and even possibly between platforms. So it is quite nice to be able to make cloud events um, discoverable and subscribable. So that's a really cool initiative in terms of greater interoperability. 
But but these are just like a smattering of kind of ideas of what we talk about in the cloud native sake. You're more than welcome to bring your own proposals of how you think Jenkins can be more cloud native or what you would like to see. Or if you would like to help with any of these initiatives, we would love to see you at the cloud native sake meeting. Um, again, a link to the events calendar so you can add it to your calendar. <laughs> and we have meeting recordings and meeting notes. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, Cara. Thank you very much. Next slide, Oleg. Okay. Oh. All right. So here I'm going to actually stop the uh, sharing. Uh, I, I, if I remember right. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so now the, the session, the intent we'd like to take now is to take your time to have you join the breakout rooms that are interesting to you. You can, you can choose to navigate from one breakout room to another. I've made some preliminary assignments. Please do not consider those preliminary assignments as a mandate that you're only allowed to investigate that topic. Many of you had provided a, a, a list of which topics were interesting to you. I've uh, attached you to those lists. Most of you will go first to the Securing Jenkins Delivery Pipeline session led by Oleg. Several will be in the Cloud Native session led by Kara. And there's just one or two in the documentation session that I've got. I'm going to open the rooms now, hoping that your experience with the breakout rooms will be positive. And let's get those tracks scheduled so that you know when you'll be meeting. Rooms are opening. All right, so now you should be navigating away, except those of you that I did not assign to a room. So Andrew, uh, Roman and Runcha, uh, is there a particular one that you, uh, Chris? I thought I had assigned you one. Uh, you oh, oh, you've been in cloud native. So. Oh, okay. So then let's move. Yeah. You should be able to move on your own, but I can certainly move you to cloud native. There you go. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to move myself. Ah, I see now. Yeah, I, I know how to do it, Mark. Thanks. Big, big win, okay. <laughs> and Runsha, is there a particular track that, that is most of interest to you? Uh, you're muted. Sorry, I was on mute. I wanted to go to the Securing Jenkins Delivery Pipeline breakout. Room. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll do the assign for you then because okay. sometimes the UI is com complicated. It should prompt you, would you like to join or some such thing? And FedEx, is there a particular session you would like to join or would you rather, if you would be willing to act, sit here at the top level watching for people and possibly chatting to me, that would be great because then I could join some of the other rooms and not have to be the top level referee.
Hello. Hi. I'm leaving as well. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah, we'll uh, do the uh, uh, well while I cre create uh, the meetings, etc. So if you have any questions or comments uh, related to Jenkins, just bring them up so we can uh, have use of this time for whatever uh, informal discussion. All right, so so I see people back in the in the main. That's good. If you would like to join other sessions, what you do is join their breakout room and negotiate with them for their the time to attend their track that track. So one item I started a Google Doc, um, which can be used for notes for other tracks, uh, but uh, yeah, it was at hoc, so I'm not sure whether they will be using it or not. But for our track, everything is there. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much. And what I was thinking is I should probably get the scheduled track meeting times and send the announce an announcement to all of the registered participants of each track scheduled meeting time. So did the did Cloud Native decide on a, a time when everyone would meet together in the next two days? I guess you need to ask Cloud Native. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm asking the right Cloud. I, did yeah. your track? I'm sorry, Oleg. Yeah, no, no, UTC on uh, Thursday. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, I added it to the Jenkins calendar already. Perfect. Oh, that's a good point. I will do the same thing. I should have thought of that. Excellent. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so one of the others was we were having a conversation in in events and advocacy wondering how how we assure there the times that were working best for them looked like they were relatively late in the day um, for you so we may need to do two sessions for events and advocacy or accept that hey we won't be able to have everybody who wants to attend every session that's okay too mm -hmm. So Oleg, if, if it would be okay, uh, I would, any suggestions on how we might do uh, gather people's insights? Should I just send email to all of the people that registered saying, hey, share your retrospective on it. What could we do better? What, what should we do differently if we ever do yeah. this again? So, that kind of thing. Well, uh, the, if you do it again, it's better to start uh, from introducing uh, rules of engagement uh, in the beginning mm. so that everybody knows so where to put notes, etc. before they split uh, to notes. Mm. Uh, okay. Now, what you can do, uh, send a follow-up message, uh, firstly to track leaders. Uh, um, then um, once you get all the information, put it to the calendar and send another email with a summary to basically everyone who registered or just point to them to the calendar. Good, because very good, thanks. Right now, yeah, so just a second, I will share the screen. Do you see it? Uh, um, yeah, so. Do, yes. Yeah, this is my calendar. So the easiest way you can just uh, point people to this page because here you can see that uh, what we have planned by now, it's JCASC office hours. I'm not sure whether they will happen or not, but uh, uh, JSOC office hours, so they will happen. Jenkins governance meeting, it will happen. Securing the Jenkins pipeline and the configurator summit. So 
So basically, you can just point to people here and they can find uh, this information. Perfect. Good. I like that. And that's mm -hmm. that's easy for me to do. And the docs track has already agreed on the two times that they want to meet. So I can put that into the into the calendar. Uh, mm -hmm. The the events and advocacy has agreed on a time as well. Good. Excellent. OK. So what we will need. So we want uh, the sessions to be recorded, right? Uh, yes, prefer it. Okay. If if the facility they use doesn't record, but in in the case where we're using Zoom, yes, we should record. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether all uh, track leaders have access to Jenkins Zoom. Uh, I know that Kara does. I know that you do, and I know that I do. So I think that covers. And I don't know on Alyssa, but I intend to join the events and yeah, advocacy. I do. So Alyssa, that Alyssa has access. Oh, she does. And I do as well. Oh, good. Okay, great. So we've got we've got what we need then. Excellent. Okay. So yeah, then. Where is it so slow? And I'm sure that Andrew as well, or at least he can. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been only listening with half an ear. What was that? He was just the making Zoom a joke, Andrew, that you you probably also have access to the to the CDF Zoom account as needed. Um, I'm sure I know the right people to be able to get said access, right. <laughs> but I do not directly. In Got fact, I'm, I don't even have a paid account. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, Oleg, you're showing the right pattern. I need to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and schedule the Zoom meetings for the for the other the other, the tracks that we've already got agreement on and get those published, get those ready to be published to the calendar. Well, it's not a pattern. It's just while we're here and waiting for somebody to maybe join, ask questions. Why not? Right. Yeah. Okay. And here it becomes difficult because it's 12 p.m., right? No, no UTC. Okay. Passcode, we can use it. Uh, Oh, I will videos. Should be good enough. Okay, so are there any other topics to discuss? I am not aware of any. So I've got the docs track, the Europe and Africa docs track. Box track scheduled now, invite there, and I'll put it into the Jenkins calendar shortly.
Okay, I'm gonna have to shorten it 30 minutes. Okay. And Oleg, in terms of, of safety, is it okay to, for me to embed the the, uh, go, the the Zoom link into the Jenkins calendar? I assume it is, but I don't. I always have to check to be sure that. Oh, that's totally safe. Okay, so the well, Jenkins. Well, it's it's. Mm, I wouldn't say it's totally safe. <laughs> oh, okay. However, oh, right. however, um, it, it's hard not to do something where you, you embed the password, honestly, for an open source kind of thing. <laughs> if you expect people to just kind of join, um, the issue you have you run into is there's still the potential for resume bombings because of it. Right, and. Yeah. and uh, there is some risk, but yeah, we are not uh, UK cabinet of ministers, and uh, yeah, until we don't post it on Twitter and whatever, commonly we are safe. We had several uh, cases commonly, I, I wouldn't say we're totally safe. Um, the LFN uh, TAC, or was it the TAC? Yeah, the, the technical advisory board uh, committee for all of the LFN projects actually had somebody zoom bomb them once. Um, and it was apparently really bad. <laughs> like yeah. they joined and they just started dropping all sorts of nasty. I wasn't on the call, but uh, yeah, they actually brought, brought in some uh, psychologists to help people with that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and and we'll we're trying to avoid that with with within reason. Yep. Okay, so no, I get it, but you got to do what you got to do. Oleg, can you can you see that I posted the docs track onto the? It's right right before the the governance meeting in the Jenkins calendar, and then I've got another one to add, which is after. Oh, oh, right. I have to show my own calendar to see when. The, okay, good. So. Did you mention that there were one session about SheCode Africa? What was your question about SheCode Africa? I was just wondering if you said that there was a session about SheCode Africa or not. So it will actually happen during the docs track of the contributor okay. summit tomorrow. So so that one is is yeah, yeah it's definitely and we'll have we'll have Zenob share we're going to have to do some planning around that because they need project ideas and I've got a few that I've started but but we need more project ideas and we're also looking for corporate sponsors so if you know any corporations that would like to sponsor SheCode Africa the sponsorship is 1,000 2,000 or 3,000 if I remember up to 5,000 for their very sponsorship levels I've already asked a certain company that employs me. So don't bother asking that company. I've already asked them. All right, West Coast. Good. Yes, okay. Speaking of sponsorships, so we have some uh, money in agenda coffers right now. Not that much. Ooh. But... Okay, so that, well, and, and so that, 
I thought that the Jenkins project's key contribution would be project ideas, but if we have funds, is that something I should bring to the governance board, Oleg, as a, as a possible or? Well, to be honest, I don't think that uh, one open source organization sponsoring another one is totally- Oh, I, okay, I see that's relatively unhealthy. Sponsorship should come from companies. That makes sense, yeah. Well, it's- technically doable, but uh, in such case, we can host the community bridge of Lafic project under our umbrella. Right, okay. So now I apologize, I have a hard stop in two minutes. I could assign someone else as the host if you would like to continue, or we just accept that this will end. It's not funny as well. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you very, very much. I'm gonna go ahead and close all the rooms. There will be grumbling and flinching about, well, yeah, I'm gonna close all the rooms so that they've come back here. Okay, bye everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Olivier, thank you very much. Andrew, thanks for joining. Daniel as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Forgive the ending of the, uh, of the breakout rooms. I know you were in the middle of conversations. You really did not want to interrupt, but I have a meeting that stops in one, starts in one minute that I have to leave for. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much, Mark. And I will um, see the Cloud Native group tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Thank you again for joining. Uh, I'll send out separate email to everyone that registered that I have email addresses for, asking for your insights and suggestions of what we should do to make this better next time, what things went well, what things went poorly, et cetera. We'll basically invite you to do an online retrospective. Thank you, thank you for participating and See ya. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. So next meeting is two days from now.